What's good, YouTube? It's CVH, uh, not Earth Power this time. I know Carl's been doing a lot of deck profiles and stuff like that recently, showing you all how his decks work and uh, what cards he runs, stuff like that. And I was hoping to be able to eventually contribute, and now I finally can. Uh, I would have done something before, but none of these cards were actually at my house. Me and my friend Spencer pretty much uh, share what we have and build stuff for fun. I uh, build a lot of decks of all kinds. As you can see here, we have a lot built right now. And uh, probably a lot more to be built. And uh, hopefully you can see these in action in, uh, when we do the video duels and Thanksgiving. We'll be playing these and some other stuff. And uh, right now I want to show you what's in here, which is uh, my control deck as it is right now. It's a Water Dark Nature. Uh, I want to show you this pretty much because Carl did his uh, Water Dark Fire profile. And I guess uh, that's his preferred version of Control, and this is mine. And Control is actually my favorite type of deck to play. So uh, this is pretty much my favorite deck in the game as it stands. <clears throat> uh, this one's Water Dark Nature, so it's still a pretty standard 3 Civilization Control deck. But there's a lot of differences from uh, a card choices that uh, me and Carl run a lot of stuff differently, and uh, of course uh, the fact that I run nature instead of fire opens up a ton of different possibilities. And I'm glad I finally get a chance to show you uh, what they are. So I guess let's get right down to it. I'm just going to show you what I run, uh, explain a little bit on why it all works together and why I run stuff that I do. Bear in mind that a few things in here are going to change, and uh, I switch ratios on how many I cards and copies I run kind of frequently when I have the stuff in front of me to do it, because I keep flip-flopping on what I want to run. But the general idea, and mostly everything, will stay the same, and I just want to, hopefully, more concisely than Carl has been doing, uh, just tell you uh, why it all works. Uh, the first cards I want to go over are the basic draw cards of the deck in the Water Civilization, of course. We got uh, four Aqua Hulkus and uh, three Energy Streams. Aqua Hulkus is pretty much a staple in all control decks. I really don't see many reasons why you wouldn't run four unless you're really tight on space. But it's, you know, three mana, simple plus one, drawing a card. Two thousand power is not bad. Uh, at least you can, uh, you can attack over or suicide with most things that Rush plays. So it's a... Uh, Pretty much a solid card to play on every matchup, and the card I feel most comfortable playing on turn 3. Uh, energy Stream is pretty much the same deal. Turn 3, get an early start in your draw cards, filtering through your deck, searching for whatever you need. It's especially handy in the fact that you can go through two cards in your deck, so if you're up against control and uh, they have you with no hand, you have a field maybe, but that doesn't really matter if you have nothing to play, draw an Energy Stream puts you right back in the game. Hulkus is also great in a different way, because like I said, it can attack over rush cards, and it serves as an attacker, which, as you'll see later, is pretty much the way you end the game in a large swarm, if all goes well. Um, the next card I want to show you is a card I run three of, uh, Emerald. In most games, this is my preferred two, uh, second turn uh, drop. You know, you switch out a card from your hand to your shields, which... Um, it is really useful when you see the rest of the deck, you'll realize how many shield triggers it actually runs. It's a great card to play mind games with your opponent. You can either play something that's useful now, maybe something that'll help you out in the long run when you think they'll attack for game, or uh, uh, just plain bluff if your hand is horrible and you want to get something else maybe, and make them think that you have something great down there, and they'll probably try not to attack that shield particularly for a while. But yeah, I guess most decks, depending on what my hand is and what I'm up against, it's a great 2-mana card. And it's a Cyberlord, which, oh, you'll see uh, how those are great later, I guess. And I, for another Cyberlord, I run 3 Corils, which might be my favorite card in the game. Uh, I've always loved it, and, you know, my first deck was Mono Water, and I loved it then. Love it now. Uh, you know, return a creature your opponent has to the top of their deck. 5-mana, 2,000 power, great card. I think Carl already explained it in his video, maybe, but I'll just go over it again, I guess. I love it. 90% of the time, it's probably going to hit something that'll make your opponent waste their draw, and they don't want to play it again, but they have to kind of thing. Uh, I guess control, it might not be as effective, because most of the creatures, like Aqua Hulkus and Emerald, they can just activate again. But if they uh, played a blocker against you for some reason, you can just bounce that and make them draw like a Bloody Skeeto again or something. So yeah, it's really great. Uh, Carl said 4 is good, and I agree, but I only run 3, because I have 4 soul swaps to reuse them if I really need to. 
and you know it just helps draw other things better. Most of the time when you run four, one of them is going to be dead and put in mana anyway. And uh, the reason running those Cyber Lords is so good is because I run three Illusionary Merfolks. This card might be the best draw card in the deck. I mean, it's not the most consistent, but it goes off a lot in this deck. There's been a lot of dispute over what ratios to run as far as uh, the Merfolk engine. I run a uh, 3-3-3. Three, three, and three. I think it's the best. You know, you might be tempted to run 4-4. Four, four. I don't know. Depends on your play style, really. I like 3-3-3. Three, three, and three. But, you know, when you have one of these guys out, uh, you draw three cards. That's pretty uh, game-breaking. Definitely changed the game for in your favor. If you're up against control, you only have one of these out. And uh, you could just draw a Merfolk and get right back in the game. It's also 4,000 power, which is cool. But yeah, uh, that means uh, if people know I play Merfolk, they'll have to like really go out of their way to kill these guys. Uh, maybe do things they wouldn't usually do, which is cool. Make them waste cards. But yeah, Merfolk's a great card. Definitely amazing in this deck. And the last water card I run is a Thrash Crawler. I don't run more than one, even though people might think, because this deck runs Mana Acceleration, oh, that's like an excuse to run three or something. Thrash Crawler is a card I like one of <clears throat> in pretty much all control decks I run. I mean, it's a great card, and you can get something from your Mana Zone, but uh, when you play it on the fourth turn, it's pretty terrible. It sets you back, so that means the next turn you won't be able to play any five mana cards like Merfolk. And it's a better late game. And if I run more than one, I usually stick one in mana and get mad at it for being dead. But yeah, at one, it's really good. It's versatile, and it makes your mana zone uh, come to life, so you won't really regret putting things there that you can get back later. And uh, that's it for the water section. Uh, it's like 17 cards, I think. Pretty much it's just uh, there to draw cards, play your Cyber Lords, play Merfolk. So at any point in the game, you can just come back into the game, search your deck, filter through the cards. Alright, the entire deck's uh, 50 cards, by the way. I try to keep all my control decks 50 or less, if all goes well. And uh, Thrash is a blocker. The only other blocker I run right now is four Bloody Skeetos. <clears throat> which is, in my opinion, the best anti-rush blocker, because the only thing that kills Gonta, I think. I think there's like a Slayer blocker that does it too, but Skeeto you can choose when to block, which is nice. It also gets rid of Pyrofighter. It pretty much suicides with everything that Rush want, runs. And it doesn't really matter that it dies after the battle. It's not really a problem at all. As long as it gets rid of the threats that you can't really get rid of otherwise until later turns, like Ganta and Pyrofighter. It's done its job. So yeah, four of those. I usually run at least three. Against Rush, definitely. The best thing to have in your hand early game. The next card is uh, four Terrapits. The most versatile kill spell in the game. Uh, I run four. I run four in almost any deck that runs Darkness. Definitely because I run Emerald and Mana Nexus. This becomes even better. I can Terrapit whenever I want, pretty much. It's great. Great shield trigger. Pretty much what I'm most comfortable with second turn if I play an Emerald. You know, because they can hit it early, they can hit it later. Either way, it's going to cost some damage. Pretty much guaranteed. Next Darkness card is three Locomotivers. Getting in the discard portion of the deck now, you know. Part of control is drawing, part of it is discarding. Uh, but this is a great discard card, especially against Rush. Against control, it doesn't really do much, so I only run three. Four I found is dead. I was running two for a while, but right now it's three. Uh, another great card to put down with Emerald, especially against Rush, like I said. Because it comes out, destroy a card out of the hand, and chances are it'll be able to at least suicide with anything they play, for the most part. You'll get rid of something. So yeah, that's good. Also for discard, I run two Cranium Clamps and two Lost Souls. Cranium Clamp I used to run more of before I realized Lost Soul was good. That was the day I felt really proud of myself when I realized that was good. Clamp is great turn four because most decks, maybe if Control didn't get to play a Hulkus or something, they'll be down to two cards and you can get rid of all their other options with that. And it's also a good late game, depending on how many cards they have for real. Carl already explained why it's good, so I'm going to leave it at that. Lost Soul is amazing. I think it's one of the only staples. It's like Stream, Hulkus, Lost Soul, like the, and maybe Terrapin, I don't know. But Lost Soul is definitely something I would run at least one of in every control deck I play ever. It's great against other control decks. It could still be good against Rush, maybe. I don't know, not really. Locomotive does its job better. 
but it's just too good not to play. No matter how much advantage your opponent has on you, if you have a lost soul and you play it at the right time, you can be back in the game just like that. Definitely great, game changing, power card, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the last darkness card I run is two morbid medicines. These are very temporary. I made the miscalculation of thinking in one of all of these boxes that there would be two tanzanites, and I was wrong. But we have two. We have at least two. I think we have like five somewhere in his uh, box of extra good cards. So by Thanksgiving, these will be replaced with two tanzanites, which Carl has explained. They will pretty much do the same thing. You know, get cards back from the graveyard. And this deck just uses tanzanite better because you can put it in mana early, get it out with soul swap. And your opponent can use all the kill spells in the world, but every turn just get back stuff with Tanzanite. And it's gigantic. It's a giant card. Uh, I don't know how many cards that is in Darkness. I think it's like, we got four, eight. Uh, it's like nine. Uh, well. I can't count. It's 17. But it'll be down to 15 with Tanzanites instead of Morbid Medicines. And that's it for Fire and Water. I mean, uh, for, well, Water and Darkness. Pretty much just uh, drawing cards, discarding your opponent's cards, getting rid of their options, maybe an early game blocker. A lot of this stuff works great together. And now for nature. Nature is the smallest uh, section I run, I think. Three mana nexus. Great defensive uh, spell. I usually don't put it down early with Emerald, because uh, if they do, like if I'm against a rush deck and they attack it, and I have to, I mean, I could just put it back in my hand, but that's kind of defeating the purpose. But then again, if I play it, it sets me back at mana, and I won't be able to play anything, like, if I'm already at, like, two mana, down, down to one, like, what's the point of that? So, like, if I'm up against the deck that attacks early, like, Rush or Aggro, I will definitely not play this in uh, my shields, unless I just really don't feel like activating it anyway. But, yeah. Uh, it's a great card, late game. Makes your opponent really, if you know, if they know you run it, they'll think, oh, now I have to get one of my finishers out, like Bull Medius, before I attack. Because if I don't, you know, these are just great stall cards. Depending on the timing, you got to play them smart. <clears throat> That's why I only run three, I think. It was four in a while, but it gets really dead. Three Bronze Arms are a very solid nature card. Uh, I was down to two for a while when I ran four Nexus, but now I'm up to three again, sort of balance it out. You always want to make sure you're gaining more mana than you're depleting, early game especially. And these really help you do that. A uh, great uh, uh, turn sequence would be a second turn Emerald, putting down like a Terrapit, Bronze Arm on turn 3. Next turn on turn 4, you have 5 mana, so you play a Merfolk, draw 3, it's great. Or you can get up to a Kirill or something like that. It also helps you be the first person to be able to play Lost Soul, which is a lot better than it sounds. I guess other control decks. Because the first crucial lost soul can really define a game. And the other control player will really be scrambling to get their cards back while you put pressure on them with whatever you have. It's really a great card. And Bronze Arm just helps you play that sooner. And pretty much anything sooner. Which is cool. Guess who that? Tanzanite, Totem, whatever. For the finisher of the deck, because every control has like at least one finisher, Cryptic Totem. Best finisher nature has, probably. Negates all your opponent's shield triggers while you, uh, you know, have it tapped. So you have that and, like, a bunch of other stuff on the field. Attack with Totem. Break a shield. Break a shield. It doesn't destroy the shields like Bolmedius, so you probably want to try to go for a one-turn kill, which isn't hard. You just need this and, like, five other things, which might sound bad, but it's not that hard at all. Especially with Tanzanite, because you can get stuff back, and Tanzanite's double breaker. So, yeah. Any good game, if it goes well, I'll probably end with a big-ass swarm... And Cryptic Totem, maybe with a Holy Awe. It might seem like you won't draw all of that all the time, but between the soul swaps and the drawing, this deck really gets through his cards fast. Speaking of soul swap, might be my favorite card in the game outside of Kuril, because it's just so versatile. You can, uh, it really makes your mana zone like a second hand. You put stuff down there early, like Tanzanite you don't want, Totem, whatever. As soon as you feel like it, comes right back out with Soul Swap. <clears throat> uh, it takes a lot of, I guess it takes some skill to play and decide like uh, when's the best time to use it. Usually I save it for uh, if I really need something in my mana zone to get rid of a huge threat my opponent has. 
Or if I need to get rid of something, like, if, if they have something and I have nothing, I can just soul swap it out. Like, if they have Bull Medius, I can put that in their mana and bring out something harmless, like a blocker or something. Uh, not the preferred use, though. If all goes well, you won't need to do that. And, uh, but sometimes you do. But most of the time it's for getting out your Tanzanites, your Cryptic Totems, or maybe Merfolk. Running four of these with uh, Merfolk in the deck means that you pretty much have uh, just four extra draw cards. Bring out Hulkuses again, bring out uh, Illusionary Merfolks, just anytime you want, draw three. Uh, so yeah, Soul Swap's a great card. Definitely the reason I think that uh, Water Dark Nature is uh, my favorite uh, control deck to play. This makes every card you have on the field, graveyard, and mana totally able to be played. And the last card I run in the deck is for Holy Oz. Which actually aren't random at all. These are game winning you know, in so many ways. Uh, you know, if you start out with one in the opening hand, just throw it in mana. It won't be dead. Because you can put a mana nexus in your shield later with Emerald, or you can play one from your hand later. Put this in your shield, stop a rush deck in its tracks if it tries to uh, mount an offense after you've discarded its hand. And a lot of the times, might not seem like it happens that often, but you'll have one or two in the mana already. Happens. Bronze arms and stuff. And then you draw another one. And just save it for that final kill. If your opponent has a lot of blockers, just draw a holy on, swing with totem and everything else, and that's the game. So yeah, holy Yaw, holy Yaw is a really great card in the deck. Another thing I wouldn't put in shields early with Emerald, because your opponent can just attack it if they think you have it. And uh, there's not a whole lot to tap early in the game, so you're not getting the full use out of the card. But overall, late game, it's like one of those cards that really win games by themselves. Well, almost by themselves, but definitely great. So yeah, that's the deck. Yeah. It has a ton of options. Uh, you know, Emerald makes your shields under your control. All these draw cards mean you can draw anything in your deck when you want. So, you know, that's under your control too. You got Morbid Medicines, which are soon to be Tanzanites, making your graveyard part of your hand as well. So you always have control of what you have in your hand. Hopefully you'll always have an answer for what your opponent has. Nature is great. Got your finisher. You got your uh, extra thrash crawlers, pretty much which are instant gratification, just a great card. So anything you put anywhere is going to be able to be used. So you don't feel bad about putting those Tanzanites or stuff in your uh, mana zone earlier in the game. So yeah, that's the deck, pretty much. It uh, draws pretty well. It does great against other control decks, and it manages against Rush most of the time, depending on the hand. Most of the time, I think. Yeah, it should be fine. A lot of shield triggers. So yeah, definitely my favorite deck to play ton of options, ton of ways to play it, and uh, other cards that I might think would be good, I mean, depends on your playstyle, like Control is pretty much a deck type that uh, you build how you want it, based on your playstyle. So uh, that's why I run things different from Carl, and uh, that's why if you build a deck, you might find you want to run, like, you might like Morbid Medicine instead of Tanzanite, you might want to run Melanie as a great card, Miraculous Plague is something I was thinking about, but I just don't want to find the room for yeah, there's a ton of different ways to play the deck, and uh, hopefully you'll experiment with it, and, uh, you know, get back to me, I guess. If you're looking for a fun control deck, this is it, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, just uh, subscribe to Carl's channel if you haven't already. Earth Power, you know, keep supporting the game. Hopefully, when there's another announcement on uh, the uh, show coming out in, like, March or something, maybe we'll find ourselves with the game back, too, and that would be great. So yeah, just keep showing your support on the channel. If you, you know, have a question or a comment about the deck, uh, feel free to uh, ask it, and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, besides that, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have a couple more profiles for you before Thanksgiving. Maybe I'll profile some of the other decks that me and Spencer have here. And uh, then we'll be able to show them to you at the duels, which will be fun. So yeah, just keep watching the channel. Later, YouTube.